I would now like to introduce Dr. Don Wright, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Health Promotion and Disease Prevention at the Department of Health and Human Services. Thank you. <clears throat> Welcome to the third installment of the monthly series, Who's Leading the Leading Health Indicators? Each month, this series will highlight an organization that is using evidence-based approaches to address one of the Healthy People 2020 Leading Health Indicator topics. The series includes a monthly webinar, email bulletin, an active conversation via Twitter, Twitter and LinkedIn. Our launch on January 25th focused on access to health services, and last month we focused on injury and violence. All of the webinars will be archived on healthypeople.gov. During today's webinar, you will hear from distinguished speakers. Assistant Secretary for Health, Dr. Howard Coe, will introduce this month's LHI topic, Maternal, Infant, and Child Health. Then, Health and Human Services Deputy Regional Health Administrator of Region 4, Sharon Ricks, will give a snapshot of maternal, infant, and child activities in HHS Region 4. From this month's featured program, Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait, Dr. Ruth Shepard will discuss how the Kentucky Department for Public Health, <clears throat> with the help of national, state, and local partners, successfully combated rising premature birth rates. For four decades, Healthy People has provided a comprehensive set of national 10-year objectives that have served as a framework for public health activities at all levels and across the public health community. Often called a roadmap for national health promotion and disease prevention efforts, Healthy People is about understanding where we are now and taking informed actions to get where we want to go over the next decade. Please visit healthypeople.gov for more information. The leading health indicators, the focus of this series, represent criti critical health issues that, if addressed appropriately, will dramatically reduce the leading causes of preventable death and illnesses. These indicators, or critical health issues, are linked to specific healthy people objectives. They've been selected to communicate high priority health issues to the public along with the actions that can be taken to address them with the overall goal of improving the health of the entire population. The leading health indicators consist of 26 leading health indicators organized under 12 separate topic areas. This month, we're focusing on maternal, infant, and child health. Healthy People 2020 is committed to improving the health and well-being of women, infants, children, and families. At this time, I'd like to turn the podium over to Dr. Howard Coe. Thank you, Dr. Wright, for your leadership, and I want to thank uh, also our Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion for putting together this tremendous series. We're very pleased to welcome so many who are attending this webinar. Uh, I'd like to give you a brief overview on this month's leading health indicator topic, maternal, infant, and child health. If we move on to slide nine, uh, we see that despite major advances in medical care, we still have continued threats to maternal, infant, and child health here in the United States. And we have several drivers of infant death. First, uh, we know that some 12.2% of infants are bo born preterm, and that's defined as before 37 weeks of gestation. And we also still have 8.2% of infants born in our country with low birth weight. That's defined as a weight under 2,500 grams or 5 pounds and 8 ounces. We need to confront these challenges head on because the well-being of mothers, infants, and children uh, determines the health of the next generation. Slide 10 describes the broad framework for the determinants of maternal, infant, and child health and reminds us that a broad constellation of determinants affect those outcomes. They include individual behaviors such as smoking during pregnancy, access to services like newborn screening, and then uh, this slide also stresses that dimensions like race and ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and general health status all have an impact on maternal, infant, and child health outcomes. We are very pleased in this webinar to feature a program, Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait from Kentucky, which addresses these broad uh, determinants in a comprehensive way, and we'll be hearing more from our presenter, 
about how both individual level and population level determinants are addressed through programs uh, such as this one from Kentucky. On slide 11, we review again that infant death and infant mortality is truly a, a sentinel measure for public health. And in healthy people, we are tracking two key indicators. Uh, first, uh, infant death or infant mortality, and secondly, preterm birth. And this slide stresses again that in order to make progress in these two indicators, we need a broad community level approach. Slide 12 shows that the infant mortality rates in our country have changed very little in recent years. And so um, we note that a Healthy People 2020 baseline level of 6.7 deaths per 1,000 live births was set. And we're aiming for a Healthy People 2020 target of 6.0 deaths uh, over the next decade and beyond. Slide 13 stresses that in this area, as in so many other areas of public health, uh, we have very significant disparities. And you can see from the slide that, for example, the rate of black, non-Hispanic deaths was almost three times that of Asian and Pacific Islanders. Also, the rate for American Indians and Alaskan Native was almost twice that of Asian or Pacific Islanders. And so these disparities are very striking and persistent over the last decade. Slide 14 looks at the second indicator of total preterm deaths. And this slide shows that for the earlier part of the past decade, there was a slight uh, increase in preterm deaths, uh, which has now dropped slightly in recent years. We have a Healthy People 2020 baseline level of 12.7%, uh, and we're aiming for a target of some 11.4%. Slide 15 shows that there's also great variation by state with respect to percent change in preterm birth rate from 2006 to 2009. We have some states, such as those depicted in green, where the de decrease was more than 10%. You see that there are states like Kentucky that have a decrease from 5.9.9%. And on the other hand, we have states depicted in, in light blue that have shown no significant significant change at all between 2006 and 2009. So I'm sure people on this webinar are looking at their own particular state and seeing if such data as we're presenting here can help drive strategies for action. Finally, on slide 16, we have a summary of some federal actions to address maternal, infant, and child health outcomes from a comprehensive social determinants approach. We have a new effort that was just announced by our Health and Human Services Centers for Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid Innovation called Strong Start. And this is a public-private partnership that features best practices to reduce the rate of early births prior to 39 weeks for all populations. Through the health reform law, we have a new national prevention strategy that addresses uh, infant mortality and prioritizes this sentinel outcome. Uh, we are very pleased that since 2007, our Office of Minority Health has hosted a national campaign called A Healthy Baby Begins With You that targets the African American community and stresses the importance of preconception peer educators. And then last but certainly not least, HRSA, our Health Resources and Services Administration since 1991, has supported the Healthy Start program to reduce the rate of infant mortality and improve perinatal outcomes through targeted grants to high risk areas. So we encourage all of you to look at at least uh, these four federal actions, but of course many, many others in uh, many parts of the country. And now I'm very pleased to turn this over to Sharon Ricks, our Deputy Regional Health Administrator in Region 4.